Another beautiful day for integration. So what are we integrating today? What? Huh? Am I seeing this right? Okay, I don't think I'm going insane. So what is this? You know what? Let's at least take time to count the number of E's before giving up. So how many E's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And how many E's on the right side? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we are going from 10 E's to 8 E's. I guess that's interesting, but that's not helping us too much. Also, make sure we realize that we have our friend, square root of negative 1, our friend I, residing on the top. So it's pretty obvious because we have a complex number inside our integral that we are going to have to use some form of complex analysis. Complex analysis. And I know a lot of you watching this video have not had a chance to study complex analysis yet, but that's okay, please stay watching. I'm going to introduce the key concepts and key theorems as we go along. So even if you don't know any complex analysis, hopefully you'll still be able to follow along the explanation. Of course, you're not going to be able to understand every single thing, but overall, I'll try my best to make sure you at least see the tip of the iceberg. I will try to make sure that you at least even if you've never seen complex analysis before, you at least experience what it's like and why complex analysis is such a powerful tool. So now let's actually try to verify this. To begin with, realize that we have e to the it. And e to the it is so prevalent throughout complex analysis because e to the it gives us a very concise way of parameterizing the unit circle as t rotates from 0 to 2 pi. Just in case you don't know about this connection between e to the it and unicircle, I will quickly explain it before going on. So let's bring up a complex plane and draw the unicircle on top. Now, I'm not going to prove it in this video, but you can show that if a complex number, so in this case, square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2i, on the unit circle makes an angle such as pi over 4 with the positive real axis. This complex number is equal to e to the that angle, in this case pi over 4, times i. So let's take one more example. For negative 1, you're going to rotate pi radians. So negative 1 is equal to e to the pi i, angle times i. And of course, when you rearrange it, you get the famous equation e to the pi i plus 1 is 0. But the point I want to make is that you can get any point, you can get any point along this unit circle by writing it as e to the sum angle, let's say t, so t is the angle, times i. And as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, so when t is 0, you have the number 1, and as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, you're going to rotate around the unit circle until you're back to where you started. So one way of thinking about this integral, one way of thinking about the variable t rotating from 0 to 2 pi is to think of the integral as a contour integral, as a contour integral. And the contour in this case is just a path. So in this case, we our path is the unit circle. So we are integrating along the unit circle as t rotates from 0 to 2 pi. And let's call this entire unit circle gamma. So this entire contour is gamma. And now let's go back to our integral and let's make a substitution. z equals to e to the it. So let's try making the substitution. And when we differentiate this, we get dz is when you differentiate e to the it, you're going to have i times e to the it. You can think of i as being a constant, dt. And of course, e to the it is same thing as z. So we have dz being equal to i times z dt. Or rewriting this, so we know dz is i times z dt. That's telling us dt is dz over iz. So we know how dt is going to change. It's going to change to dz over iz. So let's try rewriting this entire integral. So this entire integral is going to be integral along the contour, so in this case gamma, along the contour, and in our case we are going counterclockwise direction, because our t is going from 0 to 2 pi, of how many years? 
Well, we are going to have 9 e's right here. 9 e's, that's our 10th e. But e to the i t is going to change to z. So we are going to have 9 e's. So we are going to have 9 e's right here. 9 e's. Then we are going to have our z and our dt is going to change to dz over iz. So that's going to be dz over iz. And of course, i can be factored out. So 1 over i. So we have this as our new integral. And you may say, how is this helping us? Sure, we started off with this really complicated looking integral, but we still have a fairly complicated looking integral. So well, what's the point of this? Well, there is a special theorem in complex analysis, and I'll quickly introduce you to it, called the residue theorem, called the residue theorem, which makes evaluation of this integral instantaneous. So we can evaluate this right away if we know what we're doing. So the natural question you may have is, what is the residue theorem? Well, before I show you that, let me rewrite the integral like this. 1 over i times the contour integral over gamma of f of z dz. So I'll just define this function as f of z. And the residue theorem tells you that you gotta pay attention to where the pores are in f. So pores of our function f. And you may say, what is a pole? And pole, basically, is when we are dividing by 0. So that's when we are dividing by 0, dividing by 0. And in this case, we are dividing by 0 when z is equal to 0. In fact, the function inside is defined at every point except z is equal to 0. And in this case, you see that z is a linear factor with first power. And because the exponent is 1, you call this pole of order 1 pole of order 1, or you may call it a simple pole. These two are the exactly the same thing. And if it was a z squared, I want to point this out, then we would have pole of order 2 located at z equals to 0. But in our case, we just have z to the first power. And the residue theorem tells you that this entire integral, when we're evaluating this over a closed path, over a closed contour and we see that it's closed because we have a region bounded inside so we have a closed contour in this case so residue theorem tells us that when we have a closed contour and of course there are a few other restrictions but i'm not going to be too formal in this video residue theorem tells us that this entire integral is simply 2 pi i times the sum of the residues sum of the residues of our function at pores within the contour, pores in the contour. And in our case, because we only have one pole, z equals to zero, inside the contour, so here's our pole, we know that this entire integral is going to be one over i times two pi i, times, because we only have one pole, the residue at z equals to zero of our function. And the final question you have is how do you find this? What is residue to begin with? And before I tell you how to find a residue, I will quickly tell you what this pole of order 1, what this order 1 part is telling us. So why is this order so important? And it turns out when z equals to 0, when a pole has order 1, our function f, our function f can be written like this. So in this case, z is 0. So it can be shown that when z equals to 0 is a pole of order 1, f of z is some complex constant, c sub negative 1, over z plus c naught plus c1 times z plus c2 times z squared plus c3 times z cubed, and so on. So infinitely this way. And it can be proven when we have a pole of order 1 at 0, our function can be written like this. And it turns out if z equals to 0 is pole of order 2, then you're going to have the additional term c sub negative 2 over z squared. Pole of order 3 is going to have c sub negative 3 over z cubed, and so on. Also, I'm just pointing this out just for fun. If it was z equals to 1, then you're going to have z minus 1 instead of z. So everything is going to become z minus 1. So in our case, we really have z minus 0. So let's erase all of this. And you may say, how is this helping us? 
because the residue that we're looking for is a C sub negative 1. So that's our residue. So that's the residue at C equals to 0 of our function. So once we find the C sub negative 1, we are done. And let me quickly write our function f2. In our case, our function f is this thing, e e to the power of e 9 times to z power over z. So let's write that down too. So we know our function is e to the power of e all the way, and we have 9 e's right here, to z power over z. So we know that's our function, and we want to find c sub negative 1. And a very clever way of doing it, and if you know complex analysis, you know a shortcut, but I will show you where the shortcut comes from, is to multiply the entire thing by z. So when you multiply every single side by z, what are we going to get? We are going to have this entire thing is going to become c sub negative 1 plus c naught c plus c1 z squared plus c2 z cubed and so on. So when you multiply by z, that's going to cancel out. And when you distribute, that's what you're going to get. And we quickly see when you multiply by z, these two are going to cancel out too. And once again, we want to find the value of c sub negative 1. And we quickly see that as we take the limit as z approaches 0, so when z becomes 0, this thing is going to go away, this thing is going to go away, this thing is going to go away. So we are going to be left with what we want, c sub negative 1. So really, what we want to do is take the limit, take the limit as z approaches 0 of this function. And of course, z is cancelled out when we multiplied. So really, the residue that we're looking for, c sub negative 1, is limit as z approaches 0 of this thing, 9 is. So 9 is right here, then to the z. And when you plug z equals to 0 into it, you're going to have e to the z power, which is 1. So 1e e is going to go away. 1e e is going to go away when you plug z equals to 0. So you're going to be left with 8 e's. So that's going to be 8 e's because e to the 0 power is going to get you 1. So that's our residue. That's the residue we're looking for, e to the power of e 8 times. So we are done. So we know this entire integral is equal to 1 over i times 2 pi i, or 2 pi times the residue at z equals to 0, or e raised to power of e, and you know there are 8 e's right here. And you may say, why are we doing this? This looks way too complicated, but it's not. If you know complex analysis and you know all of these by heart, then this substitution z equals to e to the it is pretty obvious. And once you have that, all you have to do is find the pole, find the residue, and you are done. So this isn't really that hard if you're into complex analysis. But of course, I'm making this video as an introduction to some of the materials in complex analysis. So I had to informally introduce you to a lot of this. So it took us way longer than it could have been. But I, but I hope while watching this video, you now have some appreciation for complex analysis and some of its more elegant ways of integration. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. And we have shown that this integral is equal to 2 pi times e to the 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 e power. And we are done.